a lie repeated often enough becomes a truth. Although often attributed to Vladimir Lenin, the origins of this idea can be traced all the way back to an 1869 book entitled The Crown of Life, where Isa Blagden said, if a lie is only printed often enough, it becomes a quasi-truth. And if such a truth is repeated often enough, it becomes an article of belief, a dogma, and men will die for it. There is a lie that has been repeated in the United States since before I was born. This lie has passed beyond quasi-truth, article of belief, and even dogma to be considered black letter law. What lie could hold such sway over the entire citizenry of the United States? That the people elect the president. I've written and published episodes repeatedly about the myth of the national popular vote and the process by which we elect the president and vice president of the United States. Yet the lie persists. This lie has become such a part of our political lives that the ballots in two-thirds of our states repeat the lie every four years, claiming that the people are casting ballots for president, and that's blatantly and observably not true. See, until recently, most states pointed out on their ballot that the people were not voting for candidates for president and vice president, but for electors pledged to those candidates. Yet with all the media and political focus on the, the non-existent national popular vote, states started pretending that the citizens were voting for candidates, even though those states were using the election to determine a slate of presidential electors, thus promoting the lie by committing fraud, a bait and switch, on their own citizens. I believe the lie not only exists, but continues to grow for one central reason. Our general ignorance of the Constitution of the United States and the constitutional role of the presidency. Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2 clearly states, Each state shall appoint in such manner as the legislature thereof may direct a number of electors equal to the whole number of senators and representatives to which the state may be entitled in the Congress. But no senator or representative or person holding an office of trust or profit under the United States shall be appointed an elector. It's the states that appoint electors, and it's these electors who will eventually elect the president and vice president, not the people. While the process was established in Article 2, Section 1, it was modified with the 12th Amendment, which reads, The electors shall meet in their respective states and vote by ballot for president and vice president, one of whom at least shall not be an inhabitant of the same state with themselves. In fact, the idea that people would vote for president and vice president didn't even exist in the Constitution until 1964, when in January they ratified the 24th Amendment, which reads, the right of the citizens of the United States to vote in any primary or other election for president or vice president, for electors for president or vice president, or for Senate or representative in Congress shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state by reason of a failure to pay any poll tax or other tax. Yet, do just a quick web search and you'll find dozens of articles talking about the, the popular vote for president, going all the way back to the 1860 election. With Maine's recent decision to join in the lie, once again goes stronger.